Shalom from Jerusalem. We are here at the Friends of Zion Museum with our daily special report, Answers for Our Allies. It is the ninth day after the horrible events of the 7th of October. Israel is at war. And uh, we are here in order to give you the equipment, the power, empowerment, I would even say, so that you could be strong to stand with Israel, because we need you to be strong out there where you are watching and tuning in. So since we uh, need your support, there have been so many people that have gathered on the town hall squares in Berlin, in London, in Paris, in Vienna, Stockholm, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Tokyo, Brussels, Geneva, Bern, Buenos Aires, New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, Melbourne, Auckland, and in many, many other countries. We are so thankful to you for standing with Israel in this time of trial, for making your voice heard, and for proving you are the true friends of the Jewish people. You are the friends, true friends of Israel. I'm so happy that we have here the Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem, Fleur uh, Hassan Nahum, and uh, we have here also Rick Ridings and our friends from New Zealand, Bradford. We are really, really happy to have you all here. And um, as we mentioned earlier, we really need to keep focused why this whole war started. It's not because Israel had something, you know, to do with this, you know, starting a war, we had nothing to do, right? We had celebration of uh, Feast of Tabernacles, thousands of people that had come to Jerusalem and... I'll say even more than that. Over the last few months, obviously mistakenly, but Israel is always trying to figure out how to keep peace. Um, Israel gave 18,000 work permits to Gaza residents to be able to come and work in Israel, come through the crossing. This is, you know, under a government that is stated goal is to destroy the state of Israel. And yet, in order to be humanitarian, because they don't develop an economy and people can't make a decent day's wage over there, unemployment is like 50, 60 percent. And so Israel granted 18,000 work permits to Gazans. And yesterday, disturbingly, I heard that some of those terrorists, some of those people who came to slaughter innocent families in the different towns and villages in the border towns of Gaza were people they recognized because they had been working there. So imagine you outstretch your hand to try and make peace. You outstretch your hand to try and give people an opportunity and they return your kindness with the most abject cruelty you have ever seen. That is very painful to take. Well, it is, it is, it is horrible even to think that uh, our kindness uh, has been answered in, in, in such a way. Now, we, are, we, have, uh, really, we are really running out of time for our, the hostages that they've taken to, to, to Gaza. And, and I know there are several people that have uh, taken these posters. And, and, and if, you, if you will write to me, Israel, dot empowered at gmail.com we will send you a link how to download the posters of all these people that have been uh, abducted and and taken to gaza because we need uh, we need your help to to stand with us and to stand with those people pray for them albert the yeah. most urgent thing at the moment is medical care many of them were injured uh, my my son's uh, my friend's son was um they, with a grenade, they blew off his arm. And so he's been taken hostage. And if he doesn't get urgent medical care, he could die from his wounds. Like him, almost all of them are injured. Where's the Red Cross? Where's the Red Cross? They started to say that they, are in Ga they aren't in Gaza. It's nothing to do with us. Then the next day, when they were complaining about the displaced Gazans, they're saying we are in Gaza. Why can't the Red Cross be humanitarian towards the Jews? Why? That's exactly the point, and I've been actually asking our friends all over the world to talk to their governments, to ask their governments to put pressure on Red Cross, because Red Cross mm -hmm. was uh, founded by a Christian man, mm -hmm. Henri Dunant, who, uh, who uh, 
wanted to, to, to see some... Then they haven't gone to see they need medical care. Where are the Red Cross? Continue. Where are the Red Cross? You're supposed to be humanitarian to every... Is Jewish blood less valuable than anybody else's? Why aren't they there? Why aren't they on the ground? They're on the ground for displaced Gazans? And not butchered babies? And not injured hostages? Where is, where is their common decency? I, I think we should honestly, the whole world, especially the Christian world, because the Red Cross was originally, like you say, a Christian in, in, innovation, a Christian enterprise. Let's pressurize the Red Cross to go and make contact with our hostages, to make sure they get medical care. The last thing we need is our hostages dying because they haven't been seen by a doctor or a hospital. Please help us bring the Red Cross into the story. They won't let our medics in. So the only hope we have is the UN and the Red Cross. So there, there, there are the posters that are available. You can print them out. You can, you can take a photo. Uh, with this post uh, posted on Instagram, say we are all Israel, or we can say we are all these hostages to stand with those children. There are children there, elderly women. I mean, it's, it's, it's just horrible even to, to, to think what is going on. But at the same time, as, as uh, these atrocities were uh, committed, some people were doing some very heroic acts. There were people that alone fought for their communities. There were children that were silent during this ordeal for seven hours. Can you believe that? 13 hours, children in a cupboard silent because they knew that if the terrorists knew that they were alive, they would slaughter them and their parents were lying dead outside. These are Holocaust scenes, nothing less. You cannot compare, of course, the size of the calamity with the Holocaust, but you can compare the brutality. This is worse than the SS, worse than the Nazis, worse. It was more Jewish people killed in one day than ever since the Holocaust. It's, 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 it's horrible to admit this. Nevertheless, uh, we need to pray. We need to pray for our hostages, and we need to even pray for our enemies. Because uh, we have nothing against these Palestinian people who have nothing to do with Hamas. We have nothing against them. We want them to have a safe passage. You had a, a, a special uh, message about these safe passages, didn't you, Rick? Yes. Uh, Anne I alone sent this to me uh, Friday. She's the wife, for those that don't know, the wife of Ambassador Danny Ayalon, the former ambassador uh, to the United States from Israel and a former deputy foreign minister. And she asked me to forward this to as many Christian networks as possible. She said, I want everyone to understand the situation here. We have a unit in the IDF of fluent Arabic speakers. Their job in 12-hour shifts is calling the families in Gaza to tell them to leave through the Rafa gate in the south into the Sinai because we will bomb their area to destroy the rocket stockpiles, the underground city that Hamas has built. This is a humanitarian corridor like what happened with the Syrians going to tents in Turkey and then returning when the war was over. Then Gaza can be built properly and Gazans will no longer be the prisoners of Hamas. Of course, Hamas is telling them to stay the IDF cyber unit has now taken over the Hamas TV station and it's telling everyone to leave northern Gaza to the south where they will be safe until they can return. Anyone who stays behind is considered Hamas and will be bombed. So we need to pray that the people who are innocent will listen to this thing and flee to the south. What army in the whole world would give it? Advance notice, Morning. say, we're giving you time, we're calling you. And on top of that, we get, we get criticized for disproportionate response. What are they talking about, disproportionate oh, is... response? Should we go and slaughter children and then that will be proportionate? Because that's exactly what they did to us. Mm -hmm. It is the most ridiculous argument. There's not one single war where innocents have not died, and that's tragic. The Second World War would have been lost if the British hadn't bombed Dresden. And I'm sure there were a lot of German mm -hmm. civilians and innocent people who died in that bombing, but that turned the war around. War is ugly. We didn't start this. And we need to finish it, and we need to win, and we need to get our hostages home. 
I mean, really loving the Palestinian people means to liberate them from Hamas, don't you think so? Exactly. We have a lot of friends who are Palestinian who say they don't dare to speak out because they know they'll be thrown They're in They're intimidated. If they, if they speak out against Hamas, uh, and we know of, uh, I know of personally people in prison because they dared to, to not there come was, under the Hamas rulership. In, in Gaza, about three weeks ago, there was an anti-Hamas protest, mm -hmm. which they brutally curbed. Hamas is the government, and with all the foreign aid that they get, as well as, of course, the Iranian aid, they've taken all that money, and instead of building hospitals and schools and an economy, all they've done is build underground tunnels, stockpiling weapons, misery for their people. They hang their political opponents. They, they incarcerate journalists. There's no, they marry off 10-year-old girls to 30-year-old grown men. This is the regime we're talking about, and this is what these people in the West are demonstrating in favor? How would you like your child living there? They wouldn't dare to go there. They're hypocrites, and they have no idea about what's going on. They are the oppression. It's Hamas that is the oppressive power, just like Iran is the oppressive power in Iran and the Iranian people. By the way, they've been bravely standing with Israel all around the world, the Iranian people, the Iranian diaspora. And even in Iran, in a, there was a, a, an incident last, last week where there was a football game and they put big Palestinian flags and people started shouting and said, we don't support the Palestinian cause. And so the Iranian people know exactly what Hamas is because they're living under very similar conditions. Yeah, we really need to even pray that God would mark those uh, innocent Arabs in Gaza Strip so that they could make their way out exactly like the IDF is telling them to leave the northern Gaza. So please pray. We don't want them dead. We want them alive. We, we want them being alive and we want them to, to, to really have good life and not to be under this horrible oppression of Hamas terrorism. So they need to make their way to the southern part of Gaza Strip and please pray that they would succeed. I, I even saw the roadblocks by, by Hamas uh, you know, militants that they had set up so that they could stop them from fleeing. Well, a big part of their strategy is the propaganda war. Mm -hmm. And so when they can show um, you know, injured children, this is exactly what they want to show. Mm -hmm. That's why they stockpile their, their rocket launchers under schools, mm -hmm. under hospitals, mm -hmm. under mosques, and under residential buildings. Why do mm -hmm. they do that? It's a double war crime. They're using their children yeah in order to attack us. So we're protecting their children more than they're protecting their children. And there's so- no, Yeah, there's no end also of those lies. You know, maybe you saw these videos of how they had a doll, a plastic doll, and they, they were running around with this as if this is a dead child. Or we've seen the videos of how people on the stretchers- On stretches, stretchers they roll off and they're walking like normal. The propaganda war is a very oh. important part of their strategy. And so we need to also inform the world of who these monsters really are. Absolutely. And we need also that you, dear friends, would stand with us because the tide is already turning against us. The pictures that are flooding CNN and all the different media are not talking about the reasons why this war started, about these horrible atrocities, about these Jewish people, women and children being decapitated and murdered in the most horrible way, they are talking about Israel being the aggressor. And, and we really need you to stand with us, stand with Israel and, and pray. And in the midst of all of that, you from New Zealand, you have come during the war and you have stood with us, prayed actually with and for Israel. And now you have a great announcement to make. Yes, all of us, while we've come here in the middle of a war zone, <laughs> Uh, we're now given a narrative that we have to take home and all of us are changed so when we do go home we, we have to speak and not the fake narrative that is there but the true narrative so that's what uh, we're called to do uh, you know in covenantal grafting to the land here that's our role we are so thankful for all of this support rick there was a, a group of uh, Pacific Islanders that has, has been here now, and you, you were leading these prayers for Israel with them. Yes, you? Brad was, <clears throat> was a tribal leader. Uh, it's a networking of many tribal leaders. 20 Pacific nations were involved, 
and also the Khoi tribe from Southern Africa, the most numerous tribe and the oldest tribe in Africa. South and, Africa? Yes, yeah, South Africa. And they, they were coming saying that the indigenous people of this land are not the so-called Palestinians. They are the Jewish people, have a 5,000-year-old history with this land going back to Abraham. And of course, David is their capital city about 3,000 years ago. So that, again, that's another false narrative that has been brought forth, trying to say that somehow Israel, uh, they are colonialists who are coming in and occupying someone else's land. It, they are not occupying someone else's land. They're returning as exiles back to their homeland, and they are the first nations, first peoples. So actually, we discussed today the possibility and, and are excited to announce that movement is going forward to make an embassy of First Nation peoples, First Peoples, that will come uh, Native American tribes, African, Southern African tribes, tribes from the Pacific, like the Maori tribe that, that Brad is a leader in, will make a statement in Jerusalem. We believe, that we don't just believe, we know historically that the Jewish people are the First Nation, the indigenous covenant people of this land, and we stand with them for their right to be here. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. And that's what you are doing. This is beautiful to say that and to see that you are, you are staying with us during this most, most tragic and difficult hours mm -hmm. and praying for us and even opening an embassy. Fleur, I, I'm, I'm sure you can, you can do a lot to, to help them to do this. We will actually do everything that we can. It's so important whilst we're being maligned around the world and demonstrated against then, you know, the comfort that we have is our friends, like the First Nation, First Peoples from New Zealand, from other Pacific Islands, who've come here in the middle of a war to show solidarity and more than that, to announce that they want to open an embassy right here in Jerusalem, uh, as city of Jerusalem, as a representative of the foreign ministry. I will do everything in my power to help them do that because they're helping us with that. And we are so grateful and so blessed to have friends like you. And so I thank you for being our ambassadors in your part of the world. This is so beautiful. Thank you. And, and we are uh, honored that, uh, that such initiatives are actually coming during these times. I actually, I heard from Estonia that uh, there was also from the opposition leader in Estonia saying, isn't this the time to move our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That's wonderful. Well, the more people that do it now, it's an even stronger message, which was going through in solidarity with the state of Israel and for truth. This is our capital, not now. This is a capital for two and a half thousand, almost three thousand years. And we were kicked out of here mm -hmm. and it was occupied from us. And we returned and we were slaughtered and we returned. And so we've had uninterrupted Jewish presence here for thousands of years, and that is a historical fact. So there are people who want to, you know, revise history. There are people who want to deny history. We've seen that always, but that is the truth. And most of your audience, thank God, and our friends from all around the world know that truth. But we have to keep spreading the word. We are here. This is the capital city of the state of Israel and of the Jewish people, not now, but for thousands of years. King David built this city. And we will continue in the legacy of King David of welcoming all our friends, families from around the world. Thank you, Fleur. I mean, you can literally touch the walls of 3,000 years history. I mean, you can, mm -hmm. you can, you can go into the Hezekiah's tunnel and, 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 and see the place where the, where the soldiers of David came through uh, actually to, to take uh, and, and build this city. So this is, this is, this is quite, a, quite a place to come and visit. So we want you to, to come and, and, and see us here soon. But um, we, we are um, thankful also for all this prayer support. You know, during the first Jerusalem prayer breakfast, it was 2017, we had uh, the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of reunification of Jerusalem and we had uh, 570 people mm -hmm. that it came from 58 nations. Billy Brim uh, stood up and said, uh, Dear God, uh, please uh, may the newly elected President of the United States uh, uh, of America, Donald J. Trump, recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and move the embassy. Amen. 
Now, not many people actually said hallelujah or amen on that prayer because they remembered that Clinton had promised because there's an embassy act since 1995 and, and, and Obama promised and, and didn't do this. And then, you know, Bush Jr. in between. And then Trump had just promised and just waved. I mean, they, they waved this embassy act every time for half a year. But then exactly half a year later, uh, on, on uh, December 6th, that was actually Billy Brim's birthday, uh, the announcement was made. Donald Trump says, I'm announcing the obvious. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, and I will move the embassy. And the State Department said, yeah, in five years. He said, no, in five months. And that happened. And it, it started a, 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 a uh, how do you call it, a chain reaction, many nations. It did nations. a domino effect after uh, the United States announced the official moving of the embassy, Guatemala, Honduras, we've got Kosovo here, recently Papua New Guinea, again, mm -hmm. faith leaders, faith leaders from all these different countries who are standing up. Uh, Hungary's now announced that they will move, um, or have presence here. Um, Italy. We, oh, Italy, we have many countries who've announced opening some diplomatic presence, which will lead essentially, eventually, please God, to a full embassy here because that is the facts. We don't need mm -hmm. anybody to remind us that this is our capital, mm -hmm. but everybody should recognize the truth and that is that this is our capital. Well, it's been, like you said, for 3,000 years and the Bible mentions it for 800 times as our capital, the city of a great king. I mean, you cannot be mistaken if it is mentioned 800 times, you know, throughout all this this time period that the Bible was written, I think there must be some very important truth here that has to come across, that has to really make an impression. And so uh, I know that Billy Brim, you were uh, leading a prayer meeting just yesterday. Thousands of people in Branson, Missouri were praying for Israel. Isn't that the time to pray for Israel? Isn't this the time for all of those who have been lifted up into a political position like Esther uh, said or was told by Mordecai, isn't this the time, how does it say, that you have been chosen or you have it been... Is for, it is um, for this that you have been put in that position. Yeah. So maybe this is your time to make this important initiative for an embassy move. Maybe this is the time to show the solidarity with Israel like never before. Just mention Jerusalem is... Israel's capital. Just make a statement and I think that would also uh, bring about a ripple effect and who knows, maybe there be many embassies moving. Where do we find place for them, Fleur? You know. Don't worry. They'll <laughs> announce that they're moving. I'll find a place for them. That's amazing. We are really, really happy for that. Rick, you've been with us for so many years and you've, you've prayed uh, and I remember right on this stage, I think it was on October 2020 when COVID had hit and, and we had a smaller amount of people, like 50 people here in groups. And you prayed uh, for the normalization with Sudan. Nobody knew about this, that this was going on. And you were saying there will come normalization with Sudan. Right? You, you can say a few words. Yeah, actually, the very next day, they announced that they would renounce terrorism. It was the number two terrorist state in the world after Iran. And we had been praying that God would use, actually I had, in Uganda, had met with President Museveni, who you had met, and we gave him a key, a large old key from the old city of Jerusalem, and put it on a plaque, and we said, we believe God wants you to be the key to help many East Afri African nations to come under the blessings of Abraham in their nations by recognizing Israel. And within about four months, he invited the uh, new leader of Sudan to meet secretly in that same room where you had met and we had met with President Museveni there in Uganda. And he, he, and he brought in Prime Minister Netanyahu. And then, but it was the day after we prayed that at Jerusalem prayer breakfast that then they announced, we are renouncing terrorism. We will no longer use our economy. For, for war and for terrorism against Israel, but we will normalize relationships with Israel. So prayer has great power. Well, that, first of all, I truly believe in the power of prayer. Um, but secondly, Sudan strategically for the Iranian you know, regime, terrorist regime, was a very important yes. pass through. And so that 
has been not just about one country, it's also about stopping the flow of terrorist infrastructure through Africa. And that's why it was significant. And I really do believe in the power of prayer. Um, this country, 1948, it's a miracle that we won that war with a bunch of you know, Eastern European refugees, Holocaust survivors, and, you know, a, a lot of people who weren't really a proper army. And we defeated five neighboring Arab armies. That was a miracle. So miracles are possible with prayer. I really believe that. If you want to be a realist in Israel, you have to believe in miracles. This is what Ben Gurion <laughs> said. But Rick, you know, we were not actually meeting with the president, uh, Museveni, at uh, uh, the, 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 his official residence or the okay. administration. We were invited uh, after the Jerusalem prayer breakfast in 2019. We were invited to his northern lodge. And that was quite a story because uh, we had this impression mm -hmm. from the first lady she was the one hosting the, the prayer breakfast. And we had this impression that uh, they had made a decision to open the embassy in Jerusalem. And so when we uh, uh, came to his Northern Lodge, he was sitting under a mango tree. So he, he had his generals sitting in the tent and then he waved at us and, and called us uh, 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 to, to meet him under the mango tree. And so we came and I, I remember I, I shook his hand and I said, Mr. President, you are a very bold man opening an embassy uh, as the first African nation, you know, at that time uh, in Jerusalem, that will be the very courageous act. And he said, <clears throat> uh, Jerusalem, I, I didn't say Jerusalem, I said Tel Aviv. And then Michelle Bachman, you know Michelle Bachman, right, Congresswoman Michelle Who's Bachman. Who's going to say no to Michelle Bachman? <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, started telling uh, the president, she, she's you know, the blessings of, of what it brings, you know, to stand with the Jewish people, the Genesis 12, 3, and all of these scriptures. And as she was talking, there was a, there was a huge bang because one massive mango hit the ground, almost hitting one of the advisors. And uh, I remember I said, Mr. President, if Isaac Newton would have been here, he would have recognized that there is a law in action, it, and, and he would have recognized the law, the gravity uh, in action, but there is a law in action. It's the law of blessing and curse. And those who stand with Israel, those who bless the seed of Abraham, will be blessed. And he changed. He said, hmm. Wasn't the uh, Western Jerusalem in Jewish hands before the Six-Day War? And we all said, yes, Mr. President. And he went, hmm, we have to really study this. We have to look into this. And we sent him all the materials. And then you came <laughs> right after mm -hmm. that. And all of this development with Sudan uh, was, the, was the outcome of all these meetings. And so I really believe uh, that... Uh, all these meetings we've had, you know, we have had 19 Jerusalem prayer, prayer breakfasts. The last one in Australia, we had people from New Zealand actually with us there. And uh, it was very, very powerful. And we missed you. And so... I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I so, will make it to the next one. Stockholm. Please, Lord. I'll be there. A April 4 and 5, uh, Stockholm Grand Hotel. We want you to be there with us. It's going to be powerful. I, I want people to understand that the support that we have from our evangelical friends from around the world is not just the support in, you know, in love and friendship. It brings real diplomatic mm -hmm. achievements for the state of Israel. And this is why your help is a strong political lobby for us. We are small in numbers, the Jewish people, mm -hmm. but you, our allies, have the numbers, have the will, have the love, and you have been doing a wonderful job, and we're really very grateful. We've seen, you know, so many miracles. Like in Holland, 2019 again, the Holocaust reparation fund that the government was holding on to it, because the Netherlands Railway, you know, 100% owned by the government, was taking, making the Jewish people to pay their way to the death camp and back. They took money for that. And now they had made a decision, you know, to, to uh, release uh, reparation uh, f funds, you know, to the survivors and their descendants, but they were holding back. The day we had Jerusalem prayer breakfast in the Riddersaal in, in the parliament, that was the day that the government released the money. 
Uh, the day we had the prayer breakfast in Helsinki, next day we had uh, Helsinki and Sanomat, the greatest newspaper, stand up for Israel, which they don't do, and really renounce uh, anti-Semitism, which was a very, very unique thing to happen. We have story after story after story how nations have been, uh, you know, blessed by, by uh, inviting us, by hosting a Jerusalem prayer breakfast. You know, in 2021, during uh, COVID, uh, there was a group of Italian senators and politicians, like 12 or 15 of them, I don't remember, they invited us to the Senate Library of, of Italy in Rome. And uh, Matteo Salvini, he comes and he says, I, I, uh, I have a speech somebody has written for me, but I will, not, I will not read it, so I will say what's on my heart. The, the Jewish people in Jerusalem, they are uh, uh, indivisible and it's, it's uh, the right thing to do that uh, we will recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and uh, when my time comes to, uh, to form a cabinet uh, coalition, I will move the embassy to Jerusalem. And then he tweeted it. And of course it becomes a major massive media storm. I was invited to EWTN uh, uh, nightly news to, to give a, and they made a fantastic item on it. And so a year later, Fleur, a year later, they win the elections. Georgia Meloni was, was with us there in the Senate library. She gave a speech, they won the elections and they are working to move the embassy. Amazing. So we have a story so after you. story Happening. Thank you. Keep persevering. We need your prayers. We need your help. Mm -hmm. And please, God, that we should bring peace very quickly and we should bring our hostages home to their families. Why don't you, Rick, wrap it up in prayer? Pray for our hostages. Pray for our soldiers. Pray that our enemies be blinded and that God would lead our soldiers away from the landmines and traps that the enemy has set for them. Father God, <clears throat> Lord God of Israel, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, you have been faithful to your people through the centuries. And we read in your scriptures how you worked by your Holy Spirit to guide them and lead them when Abraham was able to rescue Lot when he was taken captive, that David was able to get back the women and the children of, who had been taken captive by their enemies in Ziklag. And it, they didn't know where they were or how to find them. But you sovereignly, as they cried out to you, you sovereignly led them to an Egyptian who had escaped from that camp and said, if you will spare my life, I will guide you to them. And it said they took back all of the women, all of the children. So, Father, we thank you that you have a special heart for those who are taken captive, for those who are taken hostage. And you have a special heart for your Jewish people who have suffered so much already and returned to this land hoping for safety and security and have reached out to do what they could to make peace with their neighbors. And you see this present situation. And we call on you today because you are a holy and a just God to do miracles that you would receive glory, that everyone would have to say, God somehow intervene. He led us supernaturally to these hostages. He hid our enemies, he blinded the enemy's eyes so that we could go in and, and rescue these hostages. God, we look to you for miracles that, on, that will glorify your name because you are the God of Israel. And we call on you for the sake of your name to intervene, to give wisdom, Lord, to the government and to the IDF, that they would be like the sons of Issachar who knew the times and what Israel should do. And we pray there will not just be the, their own uh, power, which we thank you, Lord, for their, their gifting, but we pray for a supernatural miracle, even as, as uh, Fleur was sharing about the beginning of Israel, this ragtag army defeating five standing armies. It glorified your name. And we pray that you will do something in this situation that will bring honor to your name and will show your great compassion and love for each one of these hostages. Amen. Thank you, Rick. And we are so thankful for your prayers. Please tune in tomorrow, the same time, one o'clock Jerusalem time, answers for our allies. We will 
win. Together we will win these battles and this war will be, we will be triumphant in it. So may God bless you from Jerusalem and we'll see you tomorrow.